Morning, everyone. Um, Tom Radulovich. I'm one of the uh, elected BART directors. Uh, my district is the ninth district over in San Francisco. Um, I've been on this board since uh, 1996, and about the time I joined, um, BART started its first uh, group of experiments to really looking at how to expand bike access. And uh, it was, um, you know, it's kind of a big deal at BART. I mean, BART, I think, uh, taking a little step back, was very innovative in the 1970s in terms of uh, it, it willingness to try new things. A lot of the things BART tried, of course, didn't work. Uh, so BART became a little conservative um, as an organization. But uh, um, way back in the 90s, we said, all right, well, can we look at uh, things like you know, making every cyclist carry a pass? Can we look at having a three-hour blackout where people couldn't take their bikes on board? Uh, could we look at the fact that there was no secure bike parking in the system? And um, that BART began a series of pilot programs. We tried for six months to say, all right, well, let's shave back that um, that blackout period, it worked. Actually, um, our cyclists loved it. Our other riders liked it. So um, we're gl I'm glad to be here, you know, almost more than a decade later to announce that bike is, or BART is once again experimenting. We're, we're once again going to try something new. And uh, this, uh, what we're going to try is really, um, I describe it as the holy grail for cyclists like myself, this is my bike right here, uh, which is uh, peak period access to the BART uh, system. Uh, we're going to try for the month of August, um, the five Fridays in August, to allow bikes on at all times. Um, certain of the rules are going to continue to apply. We're going to ask cyclists not to use the first car on BART. Um, but uh, there will be otherwise unfettered access to the system. We're going to do a big evaluation. We're going to ask our riders what they think of it. We're going to ask disabled riders what they think of it. We're going to ask cyclists what they think of it. We're going to have folks on cars watching how this works. Uh, and then we're going to take the information from this August pilot and uh, we're going to make uh, hopefully a permanent decision as to do we want to do this now? Do we want to modify the program? Um, do we want to wait? So, um, but it's just a very exciting day and, and I really wanted to say hats off to um, Bart's new general manager. I guess it's a, it's about her uh, year anniversary, so soon she won't be our new general manager. Grace Krunikin. It was really Grace's boldness, her willingness to experiment, to try this, um, is the reason that we're here today. So um, with that, I'd like to introduce my colleague on the BART board, uh, Robert Rayburn. Welcome, Robert. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Robert Rayburn. I represent the flatlands and foothills of Oakland and the city of Alameda. It's really a pleasure to be here today. Uh, I don't want to repeat what Tom said, but BART's bike par program is a pilot. And it's modeled after the New York City subway system. And their policy urges passengers to use common sense and courtesy. So with that in mind, I've modified BART's rules for bikes. And this is a draft. Be nice. <laughs> The BART board is listening to all of our passengers. This pilot addresses three concerns that bicyclists have repeatedly raised with us. Fairness. Presently, only bicyclists are excluded from entering stations during the rush hours when you can bring luggage, strollers, shopping carts on board. Another issue is options. Bicycle theft deters many passengers from leaving their bikes at a station. Over the past two weeks, 31 bike thefts have occurred at BART stations. I have eight pages listing those thefts. It's a major deterrent. Of course, part of the option is that many times people need their bike on both ends of the, their journey. And finally, barriers. San Francisco Bay and our hills are beautiful, but people need to cross these barriers and still be mindful of protecting the environment. This August pilot program is intended to explore ways to grow transit capacity. Let's review some of the existing options for getting around the bay. BART offers over 5,000 racks, attended bike parking, electronic locker spaces. We need more. We're at capacity in many cases. We have a bike shuttle crossing the bay 
every day during the peak hours operated by Caltrans. AC transit buses allow bikes on board and in the luggage bays of the large buses. As well, you can take your bike on board the ferries. In the future, we're going to have increased options. We expect to launch a bike share program in San Francisco this coming year. Increased capacity on BART's new fleet of the future is being designed now. And once we take delivery of those cars, we're going to be able to operate more frequent service, provide longer trains, carry more passengers overall. I mentioned that we're modeling this program after the New York transit system, but in reality, BART's already offering that full-time access on our Richmond-Fremont line. I rode my bike in this morning during the commute hour on the Fremont line. And finally, in closing, I want to urge everyone to help us wring every bit of capacity out of our existing transit system. And there's lots of information about this program up on our website. Steve Baroldo has just shared with me that we've even color-coded which trains you can expect will be the most crowded trains. And so that information's out there. I thank you, and I'll be available after the uh, press conference to show people how to use our self-serve station using a bike link card. With that said, I'd like to introduce my good friend from across the bay, the executive director of the San Francisco Bicycle Coalition, Leah Shaham. Thank you. You're welcome. Good morning. I'm proud to hear, be here from the San Francisco Bicycle Coalition. My name is Leah Shayam. I'm the executive director there. As you all are seeing, bicycling is booming in the Bay Area. Across the Bay in San Francisco, we've seen a 71% increase in the number of bicycle trips just in the last five years. These are according to counts by the San Francisco Municipal Transportation Agency, and we're seeing it throughout the Bay Area. Just look at how packed this bike station is here. You see this at Caltrain, at BART, at everywhere. I want to really thank the directors here. How often do you see not just the advocates, but two of your elected members of the BART Board of Directors, who both bicycle regularly for their transportation, we are seeing a new BART system and a very bike-friendly BART system. I really want to praise uh, General Manager Grace Krunikin as well. It really was her leadership that brought this. BART understands that the growing number of people biking throughout the Bay Area, making sure that they can move from county to county, region to region, is really a whole new customer base for BART. They are really thinking about how we accommodate the growing number of jobs and homes in the Bay Area by helping more people combine biking and transit. We're thrilled about the pilot. We'll be out with our volunteers as well as the East Bay Bicycle Coalition volunteers every Friday in August. And we'll be making sure that people who are bringing their bikes on understand the, the rules of usage. Most importantly, we want to remind people, if a car is too crowded to bring your bike on comfortably, and easily wait for the next train. You need to wait for, wait for a car that is not crowded. Other systems use this in other cities and it works really well. So we ask people first and foremost, use your common sense and good judgment in deciding how much room there is. We see a lot of interest in this. We think this is gonna open up the BART system to a lot more passengers. So thank you to BART. Thanks to everybody for coming out and we look forward to uh, seeing you every Friday out in the BART system, thanks. Oh, and I'd like to now introduce my colleague here in the East Bay, Renee Rivera, the Executive Director of the East Bay Bicycle Coalition. Thank you. Um, my name is Renee Rivera. I'm the Executive Dire Director of the East Bay Bicycle Coalition, and we are really excited to be working with the San Francisco Bicycle Coalition and BART on this pilot this August. So you will see um, every Friday, as Leah mentioned this month, you'll see our volunteers along with SFBC volunteers and BART staff out wearing these green bike commute t-shirts, handing out survey cards. We've got stacks of them right here, um, really looking for input from everyone who rides BART, whether they bring a bike or not, on how this goes, um, so that we can do the evaluation afterwards, as was mentioned earlier, to see how did this go. And we'll actually be getting together throughout the month to evaluate as we go to see if there's anything we need to adjust and really make sure that this is something that's going to not only be great for all of the people who will now have a healthy, active choice 
to take their bike to BART to get on the train um, and have it at the other end, but also um, that it's really working for all BART riders. So um, just a little history, the East Bay Bicycle Coalition got started in 1972, about the same time as San Francisco, and was actually formed around fighting for bikes on BART. Initially, when the system opened, there was no access for bikes. So we're really so happy to be working alongside BART for this next level of access for bikes. Um, and, you know, I really wanted to share, I think as Robert also said, a vision of what, how this can work in the future. So if we, through having access for bikes on BART, um, through having great bike parking facilities like the one we're at right now, here we are at the Berkeley Bike Station, this parks hundreds of bikes every day for people who are getting on BART here in Berkeley. We are looking to have stations like this in downtown Oakland, a new one in downtown Oakland, a new one in San Francisco, more bike lockers throughout the system, as well as launching bike share in San Francisco and hopefully soon in the East Bay as well. So the people have a way to have so many, will have so many choices for how they get to work or to their errands to be able to bike to BART, park in a secure facility, get on BART, pick up a bike share bike at the other side. Suddenly we have choices for our regional trips that we didn't have before and BART is really helping to make those choices available for all of our residents in the East Bay and beyond. So we're looking forward to a great pilot and uh, as Leah mentioned, we've been getting the word out to all of our members and supporters to be great ambassadors on the BART system throughout all of these Fridays and use their good common sense and courtesy to make sure that this pilot is something that we can make permanent in the future. Thank you. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's certainly one of the things that could come out of the pilot. Yeah, we, we, we haven't put restrictions on the size of pannier or on luggage or strollers for that matter. But uh, yeah, the idea of, of limiting the space is something that we could look at. Um, I wanted to give a little context here. Um, uh, Steve Beraldo is here. He's the coordinator of our bicycle plan. This pilot is part of a larger effort to really make cycling work at BART. Our goal is to double the number of BART riders who cycle to and from BART or use uh, cycle on. Uh, or bring their bikes on BART. One part of that, of course, would be in expanding bike access to trains. Another, um, and I think Robert and Renee both hit on that, is more secure bike parking at stations, things like this bike station, the e-lockers that we have at stations, racks in secure areas of the stations. Um, and then the bike sharing uh, as well. And we, I should also mention we've been actively reconfiguring the interiors of cars. One of the things that makes the difference between you know, having a bulky bike um, kind of work on a train or not is, is how the interior of the train's laid out. So we are f uh, at a rate of four cars per week creating more bike space near the doors on trains. That's going to create more standing room for um, uh, peak period commuters. It's also creating more bike space more luggage space, more space for our uh, uh, disabled riders who need the space as well. So uh, I'd say, you know, let's, hopefully if we get all the pieces of this program together, it's going to work for everyone. I also wanted to acknowledge Janet Abelson is here, um, who's been a, a stalwart on our accessibility task force. Welcome, Janet. Um, and uh, just say, uh, if there's any other questions, we'd love to kind of get out from behind this podium and talk to you all. So um, we're going to break this party up, but uh, we'll all stick around and answer questions, and we can do it on, uh, on the, um, unless you have a quick extra one. Oh, all right, all right. Sorry. Well, um, if you, unless you, if you have a burning question now, why don't you answer it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, we're not for this pilot going to be running longer trains. We just don't have the trains at this point. And that's one of the reasons we chose August, and that's one of the reasons we chose Friday. Um, August tends to be one of the lower, lower ridership months because people are on vacation or out of school. Uh, Fridays is our lowest weekday ridership. So um, we didn't want to, you know, kind of push beyond what we thought was really going to work. So we're going to see how it works with the existing fleet of trains that we've got uh, and, um, you know, 
we'll, we'll find out. Can yeah. You this sure. Um, it's a good question to, to which there's not a great answer. I mean, I think the concern has always been, you know, are those trains too crowded during the peak uh, to allow riders on? Um, I've kind of been doing my own experiment, which is, you know, taking my bike on on the shoulders of that blackout or, um, you know, riding in the last car during the blackout. I think there's room, especially if you go to the ends of the trains. On most trains, there's going to be room. But as Leah said, um, if, the, if the car you're trying to get onto is too crowded, you're going to have to wait for the next car. So um, we're really hoping folks will use common sense and work this out. You, you, we're not going to be able to fit all the bikes people want to fit onto every train, but we think that we can uh, accommodate most cyclists as well as uh, our other riders without inconveniencing them. Um, so the general yeah. manager more or less yeah. decided that we had this mm -hmm. one-month experiment. Now, yeah. will, will it be the bar board or will it be the general manager who says, hey, let's, let's do this perhaps yeah. for, for the future? And does that decision come to either week three or do you keep it consecutive or, or do you, you know, hash this out and study it and take the consultants yeah. for a few months? How, sure. How, how does um, our, I don't think we're using consultants, so it's, it's all the evaluation is going to be done in-house with staff. Uh, I think our understanding now is this will end um, at the end of August, this pilot ends, and then we will go into the evaluation period. So there's no intention now of rolling it on out. Uh, any permanent policy change, whether that's just for Fridays or whether that's every weekday, would be the decision of the BART board. We adopted that, you know, that, that blackout policy as a board, so we'd need to change it. Um, the general manager did have the authority to, to experiment um, for a limited period of time without a permanent rule change. But a permanent rule change would be a board, uh, board consideration. I think, speaking for all my colleagues, we're going to want to see the results of that evaluation. And, uh, you know, we're going to be getting customer input on the trains, uh, on the website, um, et cetera. So, um, so once that's done, I think we'll, we'll kind of deliberate and see, is this something either as it is now or with modifications we'd want to make permanent? Well, the airlines yeah. Uh -huh. passengers yeah. Extra space. Right. Um, it's a thought. It, it's, it would be difficult to do with our ticketing system right now. We'd really need to reinvent the ticketing system that we have. And uh, um, of course, you know, I mean, my argument at BART is we've been subsidizing actually, you know, babysitting people's cars during the day uh, for quite a long time. So I don't know that I'd want to ask cyclists to pay extra. Um, if we're not uh, uh, asking cars to pay their own freight. Um, but, you know, I, I'm one of those overweight uh, passengers, so I, I, don't, I don't like playing it on the airlines either. Yeah. All right, so um, any other questions? Great. Um, well, thank you all for coming out today, and we'll see you tomorrow morning. I'm very excited. Less than 24 hours uh, until the first uh, pilot day.